So this corner is really a cornerstone, which has been uh, dedicated as the city's urban village. It really anchored this end of downtown, and that is what the city was after through the urban village design guidelines, standards. We got a lot of employees from Mayo. Walking distance is a huge thing. Downtown where there's bars, restaurants, gallerias, it's a very good atmosphere. So it's that, the whole idea of live, work, play. This is a great example of a public-private partnership. So we work closely with the City Public Works Department on the design of the street and the parking. One thing that gets overlooked that I love most of all about the co-op is its familial experience. Once you have these mix of individuals together, it's it's a fun little community. And this this whole end of downtown is just going to get better and better and better. The treatment plant was designed to currently operate at 500 gallons a minute we could treat up to a thousand gallons a minute. The municipal water system serves the local school, all of the residents, and there's also the St. Croix Casino located here, but a significant amount of industry that is engaged in food processing. So this really positions them for future economic growth. Water quality concerns in the village of Turtle Lake have been an ongoing issue. This project was able to address some of those concerns and those complaints. It helps the community to deliver a water that is of good quality, that's reliable. As a mom, it's really important to me that we have a safe drinking water supply for our families. So the initial project was simply to do an overpass over I-25 and a connection to Dillon Drive at Eagle Ridge. However, it morphed into an actual interchange project. The biggest project challenge for me was learning, understanding, and enduring the CDOT and FHWA NEPA and design processes. Well, and again, that's one of the things I appreciated about working for Mickey and the city is they were able to be flexible and our project was able to inexorably move forward to construction. And I think once you put a, a good team together, I think you can, you can overcome any obstacles. It's all come together. You've got a project, and so all that hard work is worth it. V for victory. <laughs> The primary feature of this project is a four and a half mile long diversion channel to reroute floodwaters from the Roseau River around the city. As many of you are aware, this is more than just a flood control or flood risk management project. This project is the most important project in our city's history. There are 45 acres of recreation features built in. There are two birding sites, nine miles of off-road vehicle trails, an ATV challenge course, and seven miles of multi-use trails that include a trailhead with parking and a picnic area. At the peak of the design of the project, there were 47 people uh, from SEH working on this project from many practice centers in all three regions of the company. I think it's just going to be a great project for our community, so thank you to SEH as well. One, two, three. Hey. Hey. This storm sewer project is done in conjunction with a new intersection and street extension to accommodate the development of this property on the south end of Rice Lake. There's approximately 600 feet of new street here that's been stubbed in to set the stage for the development. And the new intersection will provide for pedestrian accommodations so that pedestrians can safely cross Main Street, which is four lanes of traffic. And with the addition of the intersection, the stormwater improvements, and the street extension, uh, there's already been some development occurring. Yeah, this is exciting for the city to be able to put this together, solve some flooding problems, ignite the development here, and, and just to get things started. The 
Sky Harbor Airport is located in Duluth, Minnesota on Lake Superior. The approach to each runway end is at a 20 to 1 slope. That airspace needs to be basically free and clear for aircraft to move around as they're approaching and departing a runway. In 2006-2007, it was determined that there were some trees that had grown into that surface. So the airport needed to provide a clear approach surface. The selected alternative shortens the runway to 2,600 feet and rotates it about five degrees into Superior Bay. I think in the end, everybody, the, the state and the federal agencies understood that filling into Lake Superior really was a better option in order to protect these very unique land side resources. This project consisted of three major portions. The first portion is a water plant expansion. The water treatment plant has been expanded to a point where we can deliver 24 million gallons a day. So we're very, very pleased with that. 17,000 square foot utility garage expansion. This building and this expansion is truly, I believe, one of the state-of-the-art water treatment plants. And also a municipal wash bay. It allows us to ensure that we are maintaining our equipment to the best of our ability. And I want to thank the team from SEH that partnered with us to make this a reality. This project is called Depot Square. Directly behind me is uh, the historic train depot, which was moved from another site, and we're renovating it on this project. There is a 150-room Hyatt Place Hotel. The uh, hotel is now open, has been open since April 15th. 71 affordable housing units. All of the areas that have the brick around them is all the residential. It incorporates underground bus terminal facility for regional transportation district. The parking garage serves the hotel, the residences, and uh, there'll be public parking as well. It's a good project for the city of Boulder and the surrounding community. Everybody's really excited about it. The project included about a mile and a half of street and highway reconstruction. We started with a very old uh, infrastructure. We knew we needed to fix it. The whole project does have three Minnesota highways intersecting in our city, so that makes it quite a complex project. We think it's going to be the showcase that that's the first thing people are going to see as they come into town. It's going to help bring new business to town, you know, make business prosper. People now are starting to come forward very supportive of the project, really liking the finished product. It was a very successful team effort putting the project together from the development stages all the way through the final design. Justin Black, uh, SCH, you know, everybody there has been very helpful. Great that we had such expertise to help us through that process. We are part of the project team of this high profile building that was recently built in Pueblo, Colorado. 172,000 square foot and it's where Pueblo County will hold all their uh, trials, court cases. We had the great opportunity to serve as the on the civil component and also the environmental aspects of the project. We actually made a high recommendation to our architect to make sure that uh, Jimmy was involved with the civil work on the project. It being a, a monumental uh, building, I thought it was going to be an economic driver as well, helped serve the purpose of downtown Pueblo area. It was great working with Jimmy. I mean, uh, he was always, always there when I needed him. Uh, I really liked the aspect that he was local. Highly recommend it. SEH was selected by MnDOT to provide design oversight and construction oversight services on the Trunk Highway 36 Minnesota Approaches Design Build Project. We were able to lower the 36 alignment by about 15 feet with a pretty big cut and we also realigned 95 and raised it about 20 feet to make the two tie together for our ramp connections. The addition of trails and water quality features, the realignment of 
frontage roads in the city of Oak Park Heights. In addition, the SEH team performed construction oversight on the restoration of a historic lookout up on the bluffs. So now it's a great spot to go up there and you can see the new bridge. Looks real, real sharp. Minnesota state entry and exit signs, as well as some of the early foundation work for the river crossing itself. And that's just a great feeling to be part of that team and to be part of how we can make things better a day at a time.